Bonjour class. Now that we've learned a little bit about how to put sentences together, we're going to figure out how to turn them into questions in French today. So if you need to, I'd recommend reviewing what you know about the verb être, as well as about regular ER verbs, because if you don't know how to conjugate those, your questions are still going to turn out a little bit funky. So make sure that you've got those on lock before you continue here. So once we know how to write our sentences with the proper verb, there are four ways to form these into questions in French. And we're just going to briefly go over what those four are before I explain each one to you. So the first one is using a phrase called esque. It's pronounced esque, even though it looks very different than that. The second way is to use something called inversion. The third is to use something called intonation. And the fourth is to use question tags, which we'll review together. So let's talk about those four in a second. These are all forming the same question. So whether you use esca or intonation or inversion or question tags, it'll have the same meaning. It'll translate the same way. The difference is just how formal each one is. And the first way to form these questions is called esca. Esca literally means, is it that? But it's kind of like how we put do at the beginning of most questions. Like if you said, I dance, and I ask, do you dance? That do at the beginning of our question in English is pretty similar to the esque in French, although it doesn't translate the same. It has the same usage. So the way that you use esque as a question is you just add it before the sentence, and then that sentence becomes a question with the esque at the beginning. So let's look at an example. So if we have our sentence, vous dansez, is you dance and we have the ez at the end to match the vu because it's a regular er verb the way that we would turn this into a question using esca is to just add that phrase at the beginning so we still have vu danse but we just have the question mark at the end and esca at the beginning so our question becomes esca vu danse which means do you dance if you have a question word you put that before the esca so some of our question words that we'll talk about briefly are quand, qui, combien de, and comment. Quand, ça veut dire when en anglais. Qui, ça veut dire who en anglais. Combien de, ça veut dire how many en anglais. Et comment, ça veut dire how en anglais. So for example, you would put these before esque. So you could say quand est-ce que vous dansez? When do you dance? Or avec qui est-ce que vous dansez? With whom do you dance? So that's our first way to ask questions, using ESCA. Our second way is to use inversion. Inversion just means switching the order of the subject and the verb in the sentence to form a question. So for example, using the same example from the last slide, we have vous dansez, that's our sentence. Vous is our subject, that's the person in the sentence, you. And danser is the verb, it's the action in the subject. So to use inversion, since we have subject and verb, we just switch it so it's verb and then subject, and then of course a question mark at the end. So we go from vous dansez to dansez-vous. That's it. So inversion is a little bit simpler for some people. Some people prefer esque, but again, it's asking the same question. Whether you say dansez-vous or est-ce que vous dansez, same question. Do you dance? Now with inversion, if you have a question word, you place it again at the beginning of the question. So just like in ESCA, where you put these question words at the beginning of the question, you do the same for inversion. So this would be quand dansez-vous, when do you dance, and avec qui dansez-vous, with whom do you dance. There's one side note for inversion. If you're using inversion with the third person singular, so il, he, elle, she, on, one, the gender neutral third person singular pronoun, and the verb ends in a vowel, you must add T between the verb and the subject pronoun. So for example, aime-t-il les films? So you get that from the sentence il aime les films because again, when we're using inversion, we switch the subject, which is il, and m, which is the verb. So we do that here. We have the verb becomes first and the subject becomes second. But because the subject starts with a vowel, and the verb ends with a vowel, we add the T in between so that we have that liaison, so that the pronunciation is clear. M T les film. And that sounds a lot better than M il les film. Our third way to use questions is with intonation. 
Intonation means changing the pitch of your voice when you say a question. With intonation, you raise the pitch of your voice while pronouncing any sentence. We do this in English, too. Like, for example, you, if you want to ask if we have homework, you could say, do we have homework? Or you could just say, we have homework, right? So you're used to adding that pitch at the end of your question. So the order of the words is going to look the same in the question as in the sentence. You just add a question mark at the end. So with intonation, it doesn't change much the way you write it as much as the way that you speak it. So again, our example, vous dansez, ça c'est la phrase, that's the sentence. If you want to change it to a question, it would just be vous dansez. And you just raise your voice at the end, the last syllable. Vous dansez with a question mark. If you have extra information, so uh, for example, those question phrases like quand or qui, when or who, with intonation you add it at the end of the sentence. So for example, it would be vous dansez avec lui. So whereas with inversion and esca, this extra information would go at the beginning, with intonation it goes at the end because we're keeping everything in the same order as it would be in a sentence. So it becomes vous dansez avec lui instead of avec lui vous dansez. Fourth and final way to make a question is something called question tags. And question tags are just short phrases tagged onto the end of a statement that turns it into a yes or no question. The most common question tag is n'est-ce pas, which is like the French equivalent of adding right to the end of a statement. So for example, going back to our example from sentence, or sorry, question formation number three, instead of saying we have homework, you could say we have homework, right? So that turns it into a yes or no question, whereas the other three methods of asking questions are a little bit more open-ended. This one is a little bit closed. Another common question tag is d'accord, which is okay. So you would kind of use this if you already want people to agree with you, but you're just turning it into a question just for reassurance. So again, our example, vous dansez, you could say vous dansez, n'est-ce pas? Which means, like, you dance, right? Okay, so now that we've talked about the four different ways to form questions, let's just talk about really quickly which settings you want to use each one in. So there are two question types that are more formal, and those are using ESCA or using inversion. So when you're writing on a test or a quiz or any sort of written French, you want to use these two. If you're speaking at school or you're speaking in front of a class or at a business meeting, you would use these two because they're more formal. So that means that the less formal ways to ask questions are using intonation and using question tags. This would be more like casual conversation among your friends and family. And this is a similar breakdown as in English, too. Saying, do we have homework is a lot better than saying, we have homework, or we have homework, right? So you see that the difference is a little bit more in English, but in French it's a lot more firm of a difference. So more formal ways are esca and inversion, and less formal ways are intonation and question tags. So let's practice really quickly how to write questions one more time now that we know all four methods. So we're going to rewrite this sentence using each of the four methods of asking questions. So our sentence is, elle chante bien, she sings well. So we're going to figure out how to ask whether or not she sings well four different ways. So remember our first way to form a question is using esca. And with that, if you go back to your notes, you'll see that the way that you form that question is just adding esca at the beginning of the sentence. So we change elle chante bien to est-ce qu'elle chante bien? That's saying, does she sing well? And then our second method is inversion. And we remember that with inversion, we switch the order of the subject and the verbs. Then the verb goes first and the subject goes second. Then it becomes chante-t-elle bien? And this is another tricky one to remember. Remember that if the verb ends with a vowel, like here with chante, and the subject begins with a vowel, like here with l, we add that t at the beginning or sorry, in the middle. Third way to form a question is intonation. Just adding a question mark at the end, the pronunciation changes slightly. Instead of elle chante bien, you say elle chante bien, making it sound like a question. And then our fourth method is question tags. And our most common question tags are n'est-ce pas, which is like right, and d'accord, which means okay. So here we're gonna say elle chante bien, n'est-ce pas? And then it becomes more of a yes or no question. She sings well, right? So those are our four ways to ask questions. Go back and review if you need any help. 
and we're going to be practicing in class, so make sure that you're solid on your knowledge of asking questions, as well about how to get here to chant with the regular ER verbs. So go back to our French 1 playlist and rewatch that as well as necessary.